Okay, so I'd just like well, to say hear um, it's seven o'clock. We do only have an hour. We've got quite a lot that we'd like to sort of get through and, and talk about. So if you could all take your seats, there'll probably be a few latecomers, that's fine. And um, I just wanted to do sort of an introduction and welcome first and um, talk about the structure of the meeting. So firstly, I just wanted to say thanks to all for coming and engaging with us. There's been lots of lively activity on Facebook, which has been great. And thank you to those attending online. Do we know how many are online? <laughs> Pretty brilliant, good. Um, um, we'd also like to say a big thank you to the Town Council for facilitating this meeting. Um, basic housekeeping, fire doors are to the rear corner of the room. Uh, the meeting point is in the car park and there is no fire drill tonight. So if you hear a bell, it's a real thing, okay? <laughs> So the format of this meeting will be a short presentation explaining, as we understand it, the history of the Weymouth Road resident permit scheme, how this feeds into this current scoping exercise for the Trinity area, a discussion of the pros and cons of residence permit schemes, and also to present our views. I'll explain who we are in a minute. Um, so what we would like to sort of achieve is um, after the short presentation, which I'm hoping will be short, I've asked people to stop me after a quarter of an hour, so I may not get it all out, but I'm sure we could put it up publicly. We would then like to have, um, we will refer back to a few stakeholders, a few people who have been quite involved in permit schemes, etc. so they can give a bit of um, information, a bit of a summary. We'll then open the floor up. What I'd like to make really clear is that we are a community group and what we really want to hear now and hear is community voice. Um, so we do not have all the answers. We don't even know all the information, but what we want to do is put forward people's views to Somerset County Council and our local councillors, okay? So where we can, if we do know, we will give you the information. If we don't, we're simply gonna collate it. And that's partly what the pieces of paper are about. There's two boxes by the door and we're gonna give it all to our lovely councillors and to Steve Deacon. And that way we're hoping that a lot of community voice and representation will be heard, okay? Um, so yeah, I mean, I'm sure you'll appreciate we won't be able to get around to everybody and that equally is the point of the paper, pieces of paper, okay? Um, those attending online, please place questions um, on the online questions and answers board, which will probably mean more to you than me, but that's fine. Um, we also, we're going to, at the end, just make some time and space for any local councillors in the room who may like to come back with answers to questions that have been posed if they know them or put point forward their points of view. Um, for those in the room, please don't speak unless you have a mic. We'll have um, Rachel as our lovely mic runner and she'll run around with the mic. Um, so if you put your hands up and we'll try to get to those that we can, but also what we'd really love is a representation across the board. So people from different roads, people from business, people from um, residents, people who are both, people who are for, people who are against. You know, we want a good representation. So for instance, if your neighbours just spoke, it might be a good idea to, you know, put yours on a piece of paper. Um, so yeah, obviously we'll take questions from online. We have put collecting pots by the door. This was really to cover printing room hire and freedom of information requests we've got in. Any surplus will be do donated to Fair Froom. Um, what I will say is that we're not professionals in the council. We're just a group of community people doing this alongside full-time jobs, etc. And we do incur costs and that's okay. But if we can cover that, it would be great. Um, finally, parking is, as you are all aware, a particularly contentious issue. We feel strongly that the community should have a voice and be rep represented. In order to achieve this, we would ask that you are respectful of others' views, even if they are not your own. Um, and you will be asked to leave if, if it's considered that you're not being respectful. Um, and finally, and certainly not least, I would like to thank the councillors for attending and their involvement so far. I can't see any of you, but I know there's a couple around. Okay. So I'm now going to um, present my PowerPoint. As I said, we are not professionals. Can we maybe put it on the end? Um... Ah, perfect. 
Oh, introductions. Yes, that's part of the PowerPoint. OK, so this is a parking meeting and we are the Froome Neighbourhood Parking Group. If we could go on to the next one. Um, we're basically we're a residence group that came together in response to the Weymouth Road Residence Permit Scheme. So, yeah, happy to introduce ourselves. My name is Marina Swinburne. I live in Catherine Street. Um, Bev? Um, I'm Bev Jones. I live on Castle Street. We'll do that. Castle Street. Castle Street. <laughs> I'm Gordon Alexander. I live on Christchurch Street West, uh, just by the, the Polish shop. Tristan Powell on Catherine Street. I'm Mark Williams, and I'm on Weymouth Road. Okay. So as you can see, we're just a representation of people in the local area. Um, myself, I've never had any involvement in council stuff, and I've never done anything like this before. So. It's, uh, it's all an experience. Okay, so just to give a bit of history, um, my own personal view, um, back in the summer in 2020, uh, back in, well, I think we were in lockdown actually, I was working from home, um, parking my car at the top of Rome Road, walking along um, and I saw the parking meters. This was the first time I had any inclination that any of this was happening. So I did start to ask around, ask councillors, et cetera, what was going on. Some of the uh, responses I got from councillors were slightly um, surprising. I was sort of told that this, this was a residence scheme, this was about um, green issues, that I should use the Co-Wheels -Wheels car scheme, that I shouldn't have moved somewhere where I knew there was no parking. The reason I bring this up, um, I do think at the time, possibly councillors hadn't realised the sort of strength of feeling and the impact. Um, and what kind of went through my mind is that basically I'm an essential car worker. I can't do my job without a car. You can't apply for my job without a car. There's many people like that in Froome. The concept that I could use co-wheels as a car share scheme is just, well, it doesn't even bear talking about. Um, the concept that I shouldn't have moved somewhere where I knew there was no parking. I did want to refute that one quite strongly. There was a lot of parking in Catherine Street at one time, and a lot of it was free. And, you know, I have neighbours who have lived there for a long time and are very aware of that. And equally, when I moved there, there was Weymouth Road. Um, so, yeah. Um, where am I? Oh, yeah. And I was also curious to this kind of um, feeling around it being a green issue. And I know that's particularly contentious. And I will sort of put my thoughts in as we go along. Um, and, you know, I'd be welcome for any views on that as well as we go. Um, and just to say, at that point, I started talking to other people in the community and I realised how many other people were worried about this and had also contacted Somerset County Council and local councillors, but generally had not really had a consistent or meaningful response. I've put Nanny Road up there because I know that they did um, submit a petition with quite a large number of people in it. And as far as I'm aware, unfortunately, the organiser is not here this week being half term, but they kind of they did have a bit of a dialogue with Somerset County Council and then it just stopped. Um, and also I spoke to so many people who had sent emails and were concerned and hadn't received um, responses. So yeah, this is where we sort of started coming together really. It was in a very ad hoc, organic way, really consists of a WhatsApp group where a few of us bombast everybody else and nobody else, everybody else turns it off. But you know, we do come together for meetings, etc. So yeah, next slide please. Um, so back to that petition. You probably didn't, I don't know if you saw it on the last screen, I did say that we'd started a petition in response to the Weymouth Road scheme. Um, to date, it has 456 signatories. It was presented to Somerset County Council by Councillor Damon Buton in February 22. Somerset County Council responded. The letter is on our Facebook page. If anybody doesn't have the details of that page, please do ask us afterwards. Um, as a con concession, Permits were to be offered to residents within Catherine Street from Christchurch Street West to High Street, but no letter has ever been received by these residents, um, which is slightly confusing. Obviously, they're not aware. Also, we just questioned how fair this was because it's not just that top part of Catherine Street that has no accessibility to parking. The other sort of response from Somerset County Council, um, because we did raise displace, uh, concerns about considerable displacement in Castle Street and other roads, was to propose a consultation of Castle Street and surrounding roads to identify whether a similar permit scheme should be introduced there. Next slide, please. So this is the current Trinity area consultation. What I did really want to make clear is this was not something we'd requested. We'd always been clear that what we really wanted and really felt through needed was a town-wide parking review. 
okay because we all you know we all know through it's very complex everything interlinks and really without that information about things like i don't know numbers of cars um traffic flows how can you really create meaningful parking solutions um okay so you know obviously i've done <laughs> tried to do quite a bit of reading around as i say i'm not a professional in this um world but Somerset County Council website um, where they specifically talk about residence permits and the um, Traffic Management Act 2004 are clear that displacement in other streets needs to, ooh, it's capital B, needs to be considered prior to implementation of a residential permit scheme. Um, <laughs> it seems that Somerset County Council's response to this requirement so far has been to give surrounding roads the options of um, resident permit schemes, i.e. the scoping exercises, they opened up Weymouth Road's original proposal to Somerset Road and the other roads. Um, this I found somewhat confusing, I may be wrong here, but it seems to me that this doesn't consider the numbers of cars displaced and increased parking in other roads. It is a response, but it doesn't seem to be an adequate response. Anyway, Hence, we now have a Trinity area consola consolation, consultation. Next slide, please. Um, this is the Trinity area. I'm sure you're all aware of it. Um, I won't talk much more about that. As we go through, I think I do cover why we feel. I wish I could. This is the map we got. <laughs> this is literally the map we got. Would Where's Milk Street? No, 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 no. The area actually starts here. Uh huh. <laughs> right, I'll give you a minute for this. <laughs> the bottom corner, that yeah, yeah. building there, just outside yeah. the black line, is the Memorial Theatre. Oh, okay. Right. So that, that, that building there is the Memorial Theatre. Yeah. <laughs> so can, you can, see can I, yeah, can I just say this kind of adds to the sort of confusion Sorry. that we've all felt all the way through, to be honest. Um, yeah, we're not even sure where the area is. We know we're in it because we've got a letter. But one thing that confuses me is the black lines. I mean, if you're splat in the middle of a black line, do you get a letter? I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. What I would say as well is Trinity does appear to be a slightly made up area in that one of the letters from Steve Deacon states, this is what I've decided to call this area. Anyway, next slide, please. Thank you for that. Um, I've tried, tried to be quite balanced and put in sort of pros and cons of residence parking schemes. Um, they have been applied in many places over the country for many reasons, many different councils. Um, you know, they are an option that local authority has to manage parking schemes amongst many other options. I read around a lot of different schemes. These were the most common themes coming through. Pros, that residents having no off-street parking may have a reasonable opportunity to park close to their homes. And that is a big may, okay? It depends on the size of the scheme, et cetera, et cetera. Um, it may reduce traffic flows on residential streets and therefore reduce pollution and increase safety. The idea being that less traffic driving around looking for parking spaces. And I can sort of see the logic of that. However, I did lots of reading around and couldn't really find any evidence or any sort of research to back that up. Um, Another one that seems to keep coming up is parks, cars are parked in a more orderly fashion. I, well, I don't know. Yeah, maybe it just means it's less chaotic, so it's safer, that kind of thing. Okay, so the cons that seem to come up time and again are that it may create or worsen parking problems in adjacent areas, displacement. And this does seem to be a big issue and one that we're really concerned about. Um, there's absolutely no guarantee of parking outside your house. Um, again, dependent on the size of the scheme, et cetera but there isn't. I mean, I know they try to keep the numbers proportionate to the amount of houses, but that does seem to be a bit of guesswork. Parking capacity is reduced within the town, and I'll go into that more in a minute, um, because the amount of parking spaces are reduced. Um, permits have a cost, which evidence from other schemes shows increases year by year. Okay, I mean, it does clearly state that local authority are not allowed to make a profit from such schemes, <sighs> you know, but they will increase just because of the costs of such schemes, they will increase. Um, and just, just to sort of say for those who haven't had the letter, I think 
if you wanted to have two cars and visitor permits, it would be something like 220 a year. Is that right for the Trinity scheme? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah. <laughs> Okay, and there are issues around equity, etc. around that. If you have an electric car, it's free. And that's great. I'd love to have an electric car. Anyway, um, okay. So also kind of more specific to this area, free and conservation is a conservation area. So there are kind of questions around putting up signage and all the rest of it. It's also very difficult implementing in areas um, to <laughs> implement such a screen scheme in areas that already have complex stru parking structures in place and we'll come back to that but you all know the trinity area and you've all seen the knock-on effects of things in other roads etc cetera, etc cetera. Um, there's a long history of piecemeal schemes in Froome that do not join up i do not have the time to get into that now but i can tell you how many people have contacted us about various permit schemes in in car parks where then car parks have been half built on, where people are paying huge amounts for parking in certain car parks, et cetera. There's all sorts of very different schemes that really don't seem to join up. We're at 15 oh, we're at 15 minutes. Oh my God, I'm not even halfway through. Sorry, keep going. <laughs> Just next slide, next slide. So, oh, we're at 10 minutes. Uh, the so it's particular to this area, the Trinity area is narrow, street, it's a conservation area. We're unclear what the scheme is actually proposing. How can we vote on something that is this unclear? I think I put in notes what we're unclear about is things, for instance, like I cannot understand how me as a resident of Catherine Street would be given a permit that might cover be anywhere in that area. So suddenly I could go and park in Castle Street, which I've never parked in in my life. Then what happens to the residents of Castle Street? And I'm sure there's answers to that, but it's not there. So how do we vote on it? Um, anyway, and many more questions along those lines. Um, so within this area, the Trinity area, many people already can't park in their own streets. Oh yeah, I've covered that. Um, it also seems to ignore the plain fact that many people have no choice but to use cars at this point in time in order to be able to work and participate in a standard of life that would be considered acceptable for most people. Okay, next slide, please. <laughs> ah, this is our pretty picture of mayhem in Castle Street. Taken after the Weymouth scheme, of course, we can't absolutely say it's to do with the Weymouth scheme, but what we do all know as residents is that we do sense the displacement has increased. Yeah. There's never parked there. I've never seen I live in Castle. Okay. That is a rare photograph. Okay. It's the nature of that street. Okay. Yes, normally they do. Okay. Can we move on? The white. Why are we so worried about the Weymouth Road residence parking scheme? Were we just a bunch of complainers who didn't bother to attend consultation meetings? I do have an issue with this one. I'm somebody who's fairly aware of what's going on in my community, not all the time. I do tend to read local papers. I didn't see anything about it. And when I started looking online, there was mention of a meeting in 2018. There really wasn't mention of much else. So I don't know, maybe I just missed it. It was also COVID. You know, it was a very complicated, confusing time, and I get that, but I really don't accept the criticism. We were just a bunch of motors who didn't attend the consultation meetings. Did we just dislike Weymouth Road residents? Well, no. <laughs> Some of my best friends are in Weymouth Road. There is one there. You know, no, it's not that. It's not about that. You know, there were some really basic things going on here. Next slide, please. Um, this was the update on the parking consultation May 2020. So these are the stats. What I really want to draw your attention to here is that, and this is really important for the Trinity Road consultation, what you need to get is 60% or over of properties responding in a street, and of that percentage, the majority needs to be in favour. Why this is really important is if you are against this scheme in the Trinity area, you need to say no, don't abstain, say no and put your reasons, otherwise it happens by default. OK, I just want to make that really clear. Um, and also, just to say, we don't dispute that Weymouth Road, they, they voted, they put these, you know, and this is what the local authority then did as part of their scheme that they put out there. What we're questioning is the bigger sense around the whole thing. And maybe there were other alternatives, et cetera, et cetera, that weren't considered. Mm -hmm. Also, what we found quite interesting is Somerset Road did vote in favour of it. OK, so they did vote in favour of it. The bowls club, tennis club, et cetera, I think objected. So it was pulled. 
I just wonder why at that point don't you go back to consultation because surely Weymouth Road would have liked to have thought about the fact did it go back to consultation no would have liked to have thought about the fact that suddenly they're the only people getting this in that whole area and the displacement for the other streets you know so I don't know I just wanted to put it out there and acknowledge absolutely but this is something Weymouth Road had voted on um do the notes under there oh yeah Oh yeah, and there's other things about this system that I just question. You know, you only get one response per household. Well, you know, I'd like to assume that we all agree on the same thing, the same household, but we don't necessarily. Sometimes there's lodges, sometimes there's multiple occupation, particularly as you start to look at the Trinity area and households are more diverse. So um, what else would we say about that? Why does the 60% come from? Is that an official thing on the council that they have to have 60% response? Yeah, yeah. They do, but um, yeah, and we can talk about more about that later. Was there anything but else important? Also, there? the fact that people may have moved away. Oh, I mean, what has been raised is this was four years ago. This consultation, people have moved from Weymouth Road. People have moved in. Things have changed, um, and again, it probably got held up because of COVID. But you know, okay, should we move on to the next slide? Oh, that's coming in. Don't you worry, the school thing's coming in. Okay, some points to consider on Weymouth Road in particular. I'm really sorry, I did see your hand. Can I come back to you? I won't ignore you. Previously, there was space for 110 vehicles along Weymouth Road and 15 overnight on the single yellows. Caveat here, I'm not an expert. I don't go around with clicky things. I've relied on people to count this and I hope it's right. We have done several surveys since the scheme was introduced on an average maximum of 38 cars seem to be parked on Weymouth Road at any one time thus displacing 87 cars. Can we have the next slide? These, contrary to the wording of a recent Trinity scoping letter, were mainly local residents. So where do we think they've gone? I don't know. I should imagine they're all trying to park in Castle Street and Weymouth Road, Somerset. Somerset Road. And what I do know is people as far as Ecos Court and down in um, Welsh Mill are telling me how much things are backing up now. Um, Somerset County Council website and the <laughs> Traffic Management Act of 2004, are very clear that displacement needs to be considered prior to granting a residence parking permit scheme. This has not happened. I know I keep coming back to it, but it just seems to me to quite be quite a fundamental thing. Can we go on? <laughs> ah, it would appear that of the 62 properties surveyed on Weymouth Road, only 10 didn't have off-street parking. And these do have the ability to create off-street parking. The reason I'm saying that is obviously it's not my right to tell people they need to spend thousands on creating off-street parking. However, if you compare it to Catherine Street and Trinity, where it's just not even ever going to be an option, you can see you have very different streets and areas. Also, this therefore doesn't constitute an inability to park close to their own homes, which again was one of the criteria when you read around that's cited um, when considering resident permit schemes. We move on. Oh, right, Bev, this is your lovely photo. This is Weymouth Road as it stands, and this is the parking meter, which I think people have gotten possibly a bit annoyed by. <laughs> the parking um, around the park, I'm not really going to go into that. Um, there's been a lot of confusion over whether it's free for an hour, two hours, three hours. One thing that is clear is that the meters obviously push most people just back up into Weymouth Road, uh, Somerset Road. Can we carry on? Um, I'm probably repeating myself now, I apologise. Points made on the Somerset County Council website, and it's all there if you want to see it under the residence scheme information and the Traffic Management Act 2004, and also a document about how you, how you can challenge um, schemes, parking schemes. Um, when considering residence permit schemes, you, it, um, a review to consider may identify a residential area with adequate off-street parking as being unsuitable for a residence parking area. This is lifted, okay, from those um, sources of information. Traffic Management Act 2004 states that parking strategies cannot simply be about restricting parking. They need to meet the best interests of community and road users. Yet again, something I would just question here and partly why we're so keen for community involvement. Um, and particularly important, following an upheld complaint by the government ombudsman, a review has been a, re a review has to take a holistic view to make sure the scheme is right the first time, particularly in terms of displacement. Um, and if non-resident parking is a problem, a safety-based solution may be appropriate, e.g., yellow lines during school run times. I know, I know. The consultation should also identify the cause of a problem resulting in residents being unable to park near their property. Next one. The last few points are important to have an awareness of. The Steiner School was supposed to present a retrospective parking plan as part of planning permission. This never materialised. 
Weymouth Road bore the brunt of this parking, which led to the understandable concerns and requests for um, resident permit schemes. Um, but what could have been considered at that time other methods of managing traffic should have been evaluated and considered. Um, for instance, things like, um, you know, yellow lines, parking restrictions, times when you can park, don't park at school drop off, um, bumps, white <laughs> lineage, all these kinds of things. We don't have any, any evidence other than a few comments in letters that any of these things were considered. We do have freedom of information in requests in that they're not going to come back until the 11th of November. And also, as we all know, uh, sadly or otherwise, the nature of that problem has now changed. Avanti is a very different school, so the parking issues are different. So would it not ne necessitate a different evaluation? How, how long have I been waffling for? Okay, can we just quickly go to the next slide? Um, next slide. Um, this is important. Weymouth Road scheme is now in a three to six month trial period from the 19th of the 9th, 22. This is under an 18 month experimental traffic regulation order. I do not know what these terms mean. I'm just telling you what is on the letter. If this is not made permanent within this period, it will no longer be valid and will end. But there is no clarity about how such a review will be carried out and how the community will feed into it. And we really would like answers to those questions. Um, in response to the petition, it was also stated that a town-wide review will be held by the end of this year. So far, no info on how this will be carried out has been given, or the community involvement, etc. We would like to ask of the councillors present, what do we do next regarding this? Um, one caveat I would say, I do know that we're going to Unitary next March, I believe it is, maybe. Unitary Council, this means that off-road and on-road parking will come under control of one council and that it will be a lot easier to address. But what I would like to know is that that's going to happen. OK, I don't, I don't accept it. I accept it's not reasonable by Christmas and would be better under a Unitary Council. Um, next one. <laughs> Um, is there a parking problem in Froome? Yes, of course there is. There is everywhere. You know, it's the bane of our lives. That's not the issue. Are resident parking schemes the answer? We believe no. Um, what is? Proper town park wide parking review with full community involvement and consultation. These are just some of my ideas. Please feel free to put your ideas on there as well. What I would love to see is that the um, Somerset County Council really responds to us, takes into account our views as a community. Um, next slide, please. Um, also, it's just a note that the Somerset County Council website in 2021 stated that requests for changes to parking restrictions, and that, that means residents' permit schemes, will therefore no longer be dealt with individually, but will form part of a wider town parking review. The parking review programme has been developed and we will hold individual requests on file to be considered as part of a wider town reviews. Due to the input of councillors such as Martin Dimry and Mick Dunk, we have been given an assurance that the Trinity scoping exercise will now feed into this town-wide review, okay, and not be implemented in the way that the Weymouth Road one has been. However, what I would say to you is it's very important, if you are against it, to record no and your reasons why. Obviously, if you're for it, equally, it works both ways, but don't abstain. Um, and as per, but as per our original request from petition, we would ask that Somerset County Council honour this in respect of the Weymouth Road scheme as well. Next slide, I think I've just about finished. Yeah, no, no, it's fine, this is the conclusion, okay? Yeah. Okay, in conclusion, thank you for listening. We need a community voice. We want a town-wide parking review. We want equity and fairness. Please be aware that the figures matter. Don't abstain, say nay and say why, if that's what you feel. Many different parking problems, too complex to deal with here. And there you go. So next slide, please. We'd like to thank Damon Houston, Marty Dimbry, Mark Dorrington, who have been very helpful so far. Um, Clark, Town Clerk Paul Wynn has agreed to collate information to present as part of a review, and we know how. Councillor Mark Dorrington has kindly agreed to act as a lead for the Trinity Scheme consultation. And Steve Deacon, parking officer on the bottom of his letter says, please contact me, and this is his email address. Next slide, please. <laughs> there you go. Now, Thank you. you are welcome. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure. Um, we can just leave that up for a bit. Well, it's really on the Facebook page so we can get the information. I don't see why we couldn't. I would just like to check with councillors they're happy for that. But um, yeah, I don't see why we can't. No, no, no. It's fine.
There are, yeah. But we could, we're going. No, he's on holiday, I'm afraid. Yeah. Oh, well, I'm going to ask the councillors to speak at the end. Okay. Um. So, very whistle stop tour. I'm sure I missed loads out. I'd just like to quickly ask: Is there anybody thinking particularly of Bob who would like to make a couple of points? These are people who've been involved, and then we open up the floor for questions. Am I on? Great. Well, thanks very much. Um, I live in Somerset Road and I voted against the scheme, but more of that in a moment. I first became aware of the scheme four years ago when um, I was aware that uh, the local councillor organised a meeting of residents in Weymouth Road here, and that was four years ago now. I heard about it and gate crashed the meeting living in Somerset Road because I thought actually it was going to impact upon us. And uh, I said at that meeting then, four years ago, that there needs to be a much wider consultation of all the area before anything was actually implemented. Uh, what happened then was a scheme was devised by county council officers and the local councillor. And uh, this was presented to residents, as you saw just now, in Somerset Road and, and uh, Weymouth Road and the surrounding streets as well. Now, what we were presented with was a scheme which actually covered Somerset Road and Weymouth Road. And the choice of questions were either yes or no in favour of that scheme. I voted no. And the reasons I, I voted no was because I think, first of all, that public highways are just that. They belong to everyone, not just local residents. They belong to people on bicycles. They belong to people coming in, into town to shop and everything else. And nowhere is that more important than Somerset Road and Weymouth Road, which actually adjoin the park. Because living in Somerset Road, I see daily young children coming out of cars. I see older children, people that are using the bowls club, etc. The park is a pearl in this town. And to stop people using it, and it does stop people using it because of the parking situation, I think is actually a travesty. So coming back to the consultation, I say the, the scheme as presented was Somerset Road and Weymouth Road. What actually happened then was we were told the scheme, Somerset Road and Weymouth Road, was going to be implemented. What happened then was that there was a backlash from the bowls club, the, the tennis club, and some other sources, and Somerset Road was then dropped. So what we've actually got now, the scheme in Weymouth Road, was something that we weren't consulted on. Nobody actually voted for, whether you were in Weymouth Road or Somerset Road, and it's been a complete disaster, as we've heard, because what is happening now is that the whole street and most of the street in Weymouth Road is empty. Somerset Road and all the adjoining roads are now rammed with cars, particularly against the, the, the park the park side of Somerset Road, which is really dangerous. You know, I see daily kids being sort of bundled out of cars there, shoved around the back of the car, traffic streaming down and now really quickly to try to get from one end to the other because there's cars parked at both ends and they cannot get through. So they speed up to get through. It's becoming even, it was always dangerous, but it's becoming even more dangerous. And I say, so, you know, from your point of view, Trinity, I would, if I were you, I would argue and vote against it. But don't be, don't be complacent in thinking that what you actually vote for is what you get, because it may well not be. And that's the story of what's happened in Weymouth Road. Yeah. Thank you, Bob, appreciate that. Um, yeah, I mean, what I would say, if you don't get a chance to make your points, this is absolutely what the pieces of paper for, because we're the best one in the world, we cannot allow, you know, it, it isn't time. Um, anybody else very quickly here? No, hold on a minute, Bev. Anybody else quickly here? Any points I missed? No, okay. I, I was just thinking, there was this gentleman who had his hand up ages ago. Did you want to come back? Oh, I'm so sorry. Okay, show of hands. Right, Rachel. Maybe if you could state your name and where you live, because what... is it not working? John, John Berman, Castle Street. Lovely. Okay. Right. I mean, is that all right? Yes. Oh, right. I got you. I'm not used to these things. Uh, one uh, moment. Sorry. Am I right in saying this is all being recorded? I think we need, just need to make you all aware of that as well. Okay. Okay. That's fine. Um, okay. I'll, I'll. You stood up. I'll sit down. Um, the important thing is. The way the actual consultation document was actually presented to the um, inhabitants of uh, Trinity in itself is actually structurally way, really off the mark. Because basically it, it actually starts off by saying, 
um, we're, we're having a, a consultation document to impose one of these schemes on you. And then immediately goes into a myriad detail about we could do this, we could do that. And it appears to actually sound as though um, that we, they're giving us choices, but they're not. They're just blanking out the main choice, which is not do anything. And that is the most important thing because, I mean, one, I'm against most regulations any, anyway, because they tend to actually have a, a re resolution which is way, way short of what it's supposed to be. But, I mean, in this case, it's, um, I'm sorry, I've lost my tr track. Um, it's, so it's not a, a neutral thing. It doesn't give you uh, a balanced view of, here are the, the negatives, here are the positives. 90% of that document is listing the positives and they go to really extremes to actually add listing yeah. points of positives. The negatives are very, very hidden. 10% of the, the document is negatives. I absolutely agree with and you. And basically that is not the way that business works. Yeah. It might be the way that councils impose these things on you, but basically that's why they get into such deep water because they don't yeah. do normal things. The, the yeah. council itself actually has admitted um, on the thing that um, the, I'm oh, sorry. Sorry. Yeah, what I would say is what we should have said is we're going to keep it to a minute each and then... Yeah, yeah, sorry. So I mean, point, the, the, the council has admitted that it's their own own goal. Basically, they say that since controlled parking has been introduced in the county, there has been an increased presence of non-residential parking vehicles in adjacent areas. They're admitting that once you introduce the cancer of controlled parking in one area, it's like a thin end of the wedge. There's no way of stopping it. Thank it you. Just increases and um, our lovely minute taker is recording all points, etc., and names and addresses. Uh, never show of hands, please. Um, at the back, gentlemen in the grey top, can you state your name and your address and whether it's sort of business or resident or both? And bear in mind, we're going to try and keep you to a minute, sorry. Okay, I'll try. Um, <laughs> my name's Kevin O'Shea. I've been a resident of Weymouth Road for 26 years. Mm -hmm. And over that period of time, I've seen the road become progressively more and more dangerous, just in the way that, sorry, Bob was describing a moment ago for Somerset Road. Cars travelling at just wholly inappropriate speeds up and down the road, a road which incidentally has a crossing point into the park for pedestrians. And, um, and those drivers with only one thing on their mind, and it isn't the child who's crossing the road into, into the park. It isn't the resident who's edging out of their drive gingerly into traffic. It isn't the elderly lady who's crossing the road to go to the local shops. It's, I must get to the other end of this road before I meet another vehicle that I'm gonna have difficulty in passing coming the other way. For that reason, I initiated the original petition in Weymouth Road. I'll stand here quite happily and state that. I'm really that. pleased you're here actually, that's great. Um, I'll read you the wording of that petition because it's really important that you understand what it was. We, the undersigned, request that Somerset County Council investigate what options are available to improve parking, traffic management, and highway safety in Weymouth Road, Froome. Yep. Not we, the undersigned, wish to okay. park immediately outside our front door exclusively. Not we, the undersigned, are fed up with people parking in front of our drives and blocking them. But we, the undersigned, have the foresight to see that it's only a matter of time unless something is changed before there's a serious collision or somebody gets knocked down and killed. Yeah. That petition was rooted firmly and solely in consideration of public safety. And firstly, I would urge all of, the, all of those people who might be minded to overturn the Weymouth Road scheme to seriously consider your motives for doing so. Because what you need to do is ask yourself, whatever they may be, do they really justify a return to Russian roulette with children's lives in Weymouth Road? To the people in Trinity and this Trinity area, I would like to say, you know, that, that getting a consensus across that whole area of what you would like is gonna be incredibly difficult. I don't envy you that at all. 
but I wish you all the luck in the world because only you know what the specific issues, and that was the specific issue in Weymouth Road, only you know what the specific issues are in your streets. And I wish you every good fortune in finding the right outcome for them. Um, thank you so much for that. Kevin, thank you for... Yeah, thank you. Oh, no. Well, all, all I'd say, just just in the in the in the interest of keeping um, balance and transparency, and this is purely my experience living where I do at the top of Weymouth Road, opposite the gates. That if anything, I come out of my house and people are now doing fifty because they've got a motorway to travel up and down. So I'm not sure that either is. I'm not saying one is better or worse than the other, but I'm not saying that it's an absolutely black and white defined thing. And can, um, very, very yeah, go on. <laughs> that, um, that my experience and observation of the general traffic flow in the city is that it, is, that it has improved dramatically and slowed down. Okay, well then we'll have to agree to differ on that. Okay. Right. I'm, re I'm really sorry. Thank you so much. I just wanted to come back with a few thoughts I think we touched on in there. I think our argument was never that there weren't issues in Weymouth Road. We could all see that. However, just to say... Yeah, yeah, sure, go back to that. Just to say, there were many other options that I would have liked to have known as Somerset County Council had considered, evaluated, using stats, looking at things, doing things like um, speeds. We did try to get somebody to look at speeds. Police said they couldn't do it. Lots of other things. That information wasn't collated. Why didn't we look at pedestrian crossings? Why didn't we look at, oh, so many other options. The problem is with the residence permit scheme, it pushes it out. We've always had huge issues with child safety. Believe you me, on Catherine Street with my own children. It's worse now. It gets worse in all the other streets. That would be my only response. It was never saying you, there weren't issues in Weymouth Road. Of course there are. It's about how it's addressed, how the local authority approaches it. All right, next person for a question. Gentleman on the end. And then, because I think... Yes. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> right, right back at the start, you said that, uh, talking about the, 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 the proposed scheme in mm. Trinity, are they offering you that as a separate scheme or are they offering you that as know. part of the Weymouth Road scheme? I but do the point not know. I would make, and I've lived in Weymouth Road for mm. uh, 21 years, is that people from the surrounding streets always parked in Weymouth Road. Mm. I know that Sarah, uh, yeah. who, who lives in Catherine Street, yeah. has, has parked in Weymouth Road for 20 years. Yeah. Uh, or certainly the 20 years I've been there. Yeah. Um, and it's, it was never an issue. Yes. What was what became an issue was when the school was set yeah. up yes. without a sustainable traffic yeah. and parking yeah. plan. Yeah. When Mendip changed the parking restrictions in yeah. town, yes. and that drove shoppers yeah. to park outside and walk in. Yeah. It drove wo workers outside yeah. to walk in, and if the scheme on offer, yeah. I would say, uh, go for. A huge scheme. I think the whole of Froome should be residence parking so, and workers <laughs> and who, who commute in should pay yeah. the cost of, okay. of coming in. Shoppers who come in should pay the cost of coming in by paying to park in the car parks. Yeah. If I if I drive out into the countryside <laughs> and park out somebody's house, yeah. they come in, they come and look at me and they they, they don't like it. Well, Lovely. thank you equally, so much for your point. I'm really sorry, I'm gonna have to move it on. But, but you, we're not clear here what this scheme yeah. is, are we? Hey? We're not clear. No, here we're not, and that's part of my point entirely. Man, also, uh, my point would be, I think I've slightly lost my point, but uh, we come back to, we need a town-wide parking review. And frankly, there are so many other ways of controlling traffic than residence permit schemes, and it needs looking at and the needs. Next question, please. Can we have somebody who's... Where are you from? Sorry. Um, <laughs> oh, <laughs> Okay, I don't mind that. I just wanted a bit of a spread. Yeah, appreciate that. No, I, the problem is that Weymouth Road is the only scheme around. Yeah. Um, Mark will be able to tell you it's still not actually been implemented. Oh, it has. No, it hasn't. Twenty uh, fourth of August, Mr. Deking wrote a letter to all mm. residents identifying the permit arrangements. Mm. Those permit arrangements are still not available. Therefore, the scheme itself. We're buying permits. 
But no. we're buying permits and people are being right. ticketed. Can, can, yeah. Yeah, you, there are three categories of permits. Right. Straight permits, uh, residence parking, yeah. one or two vehicles. Yeah. Um, it's supposed to be one unless you haven't got a garage yeah. uh, or street parking. Um, Somerset Council have moved that to two. Right. Because a number of the houses in Weymouth Road are large or multiple yeah. occupancy. Yeah. Um, the second category was reduced emission vehicles were yeah. supposed to have reduced fee. Yeah. That, despite being told the scheme came in on the 19th of September, yeah. wasn't implemented until the last week of September. So you yeah. had enforcement going through. Yeah. The third category were legacy vehicles where you had more than two vehicles per building. Yeah. That has not been introduced. You cannot buy a legacy permit which results in a number of the cars in Weymouth Road my daughter's being one uh, receiving penalty notices which are being disputed yeah what's interesting though is Mr Deakin despite engaging with both uh, town council and uh, uh, Martin de Murray yeah. uh, on county yeah. um, Steve Deakin's department hasn't bothered to respond to emails or letters since the end of yeah. August. And I think that is the most frustrating thing. Yeah. Without taking any more time, I totally agree. There was a problem in Weymouth Road. The first consultation meeting, which was actually earlier than the first gentleman suggested, <laughs> residents put up various ideas, including just making the street one way, yeah. anything yeah. to avoid the traffic issue yeah not the parking issue the traffic issue yeah sorry i've had that's enough a really, that's a really good definition thank you sorry do you support the residents parking no i don't i don't and yeah. the reason i didn't yeah was because of the park okay. we we yeah council hadn't even noticed there were two thank bowls you. clubs there thank you i think it's really uh, difficult to be that precise actually but can we come to you as a representative from milk street did you want to oh, speak I'm not milk street. oh um, Your Milk Street, Ter Terry, brilliant. Um, yeah. Hello, it's Terry Pinto, Milk Street, opposite the Griffin. I haven't had this review letter, which is why I was asking about the map. Closer to your mouth. Uh, I wasn't. I didn't get the letter from council about, even though I live on Milk Street, and we are affected directly by the traffic on Castle Street. We are directly affected by the schools. I have constant issue about parking at the school. You know, it's better than it is with the Avanti. I have to say, where with Vallis and St. Louis, not brilliant, but um, also as a local architect, I've been past 10, 15 years working in here. It has got worse on Somerset Road and uh, Weymouth Road. I mean, designing the schemes there, my builders are having difficulty and it is dangerous. I think the, co the comments were, it was never about parking, it was about safety. Yeah. And, the question I've got really is, is the review being done independently or within Somerset Council? We have no idea. So I mean, and for my feeling is if they're doing a what if they're doing a town wide review, it should be done independent of the council, mm. and they should cut they should uh, commission an independent yeah. plan, urban planner to look at it, not do it within house. Thank you. Um, yeah, who? What road are you from? Um, hello. Uh, um, my name's Richard Chisnell. I live on Whittock's Lane, which oh, okay. is, uh, everybody yep. knows is a beautiful road for traffic. Yeah. Um, um, and I've lived in Froome since 2017, so please excuse the London accent. Um, um, I'd just like to make a couple of points, and one is to find a couple of points of unity, because we seem to be disagreeing about a lot of things. And one point of unity, that, that is there a problem? Well, yes, of course there is a problem. Does it to be, need to be managed? Yes, it does need to be managed. And does a piecemeal approach work? No, it won't. I would also like to make the point that although Milk Street is only accessible from Castle Street and Whittock's Lane, the residents on the uh, school end, the uh, Whittock's Lane end of Milk Street, didn't get the letter because they're not in the Trinity area, which is rather odd. It's the made up um, Trinity area. But, yeah. but um, I'd just like to make the point um, that, that uh, we actually pay 300 plus pounds a year to park in South Parade Car Park. Mm -hmm. and, and we have a, a sort of the worst of both worlds situation, which I think would be quite possibly transferred to any parking scheme. And that is that there is no enforcement of the parking regulations. Now, I'm no fan of enforcement, but we have a problem. 
what happens is they know nobody's going to check the park, but they check the parking spaces after six o'clock. And so I'm not pointing any fingers, but we have the South Parade Club and the, and, the, and the theater nearby. And when there's an event on, we actually struggle to find the parking space there, even though we pay 300 quid a year. So you have a situation where the inconsiderate and the irresponsible are, I was going to make a comment about urologists, um, uh, from, uh, from, from us who are actually trying to be responsible. Yeah. If there is lax enforcement, and you can go down to the bottom of Catherine Street any yeah. night and see loads of cars parked on the double yellow lines. Yeah. Uh, okay. the, the worst of all worlds yeah. be to have a scheme which on the surface of it works, but is enforced poorly. And here is my main idea. Okay. The enforcement is run by a private company uh, employed by Somerset County Council or whoever it is. And they are paid to give fines and they don't work after six o'clock. Now, Froome has a reputation for being trailblazing on a community level. And as we are moving over to this unitary authority, I think it presents us an opportunity where we can run that parking scheme ourselves because we are on the spot. And if we run it, any benefits will accrue to us. Thank you very much. Interesting ideas, great to put forward. Thank you. Um, can I have hands from maybe a, another street? Selwood Road. Um, hello, Selwood Road. Thank you. Oh. I'm Andrew, I live on High Street. Oh, cool. Yeah. Uh, and so the, my main thing is with, if regulations come in, I mean, the, the parking's been a nightmare since Weymouth Road. Uh, they, you just can't park. I park on my road about once a week, probably. Uh, but if they bring in regulations, a lot of spaces on Wine Street <clears throat> uh, are on the pavement. So you're going to lose six or seven spaces straight away. Yeah. Uh, and it's just going to make the problem a hell of a lot worse. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, uh, that's it. Yeah, no, it's a really valid point. Um, and I, I just wanted actually to respond to the gentleman over there. Um, I've sorry, forgot what I was going to say. It's about, um, oh, it doesn't matter. Sorry, carry on. It'll come back. Next person from another street. Selwood Road. Selwood Road. Perfect. Let's, let's talk mic? to the lady. She has to have a little mic. <laughs> then after that, we could see if there's any questions online. And then I think we'll hand over to councillors. I'm really not good at public speaking, so... Can you bring it close to your mouth? Sorry. Um, I'm Rosie and I'm on Selwood Road. Um, I've also, um, I'm representing somebody else who wasn't able to come here on Selwood Road. Um, and like one of our main points is really that there, there isn't a problem with parking. There's absolutely no need to bring in a, a parking permit scheme where where we live yeah. you can always park somewhere sure you can't park directly outside your house most of us don't care yeah. um and that um it's already a deprived area so kind of imposing an extra cost of people in a cost of living crisis yeah. um when it's not needed feels really yeah, yeah. Hi, yeah. <laughs> and i think what i would just really really reiterate and we will come to you is that um, that was, you know, it's, it's a lot of this is a response to the Weymouth Road scheme. Um, yeah, the, the, the problems are in Weymouth Road, but the, the implementation of something that takes away parking, makes everybody else move around, has created problems. I, think the I problem, used to live on Selwood the Road. Problem there were is, no problems on is that. in Froome, Froome is a historical town. It wasn't built for cars. Yeah. You know, we're not, yeah. I don't think we can make the problem better, but I think this makes it worse. Precisely. Shall we talk to this gentleman here? Thank you, Terry Stewart. I live on Trinity Walk. Um, one of the issues is that the Trinity area is such a diverse uh, set of housing. You've got a lot of owner occupiers. You've got a lot of Airbnb. You have a lot of rent to buy. You know, rent people to rent buy and then rent it out. And you've got a lot of social housing, an awful lot of social housing around the Trinity. A lot of these houses actually have private parking spaces outside of their house. There's a little culvert and one side of the culvert, it actually belongs to the property. The other side is the road, but it looks to the general public that this is just an ordinary offer of parking, but it's not because they're all numbered and got a little pretty, pretty numbers in. And you've got to remember that if you look at Castle Street, you come down Castle Street, one side is social housing, the other side is mm -hmm. private. Mm -hmm. These houses run it from 500,000 to, on the corner, just under a million pounds. 
So, in, and that's right next to or then to social housing flats. So these flats have got their own private parking in the back of them. So we've got to be very, very careful when it's something like that implemented. There's not a big issue. Living in the heart of this is not a big issue. The only issue is school times, when they rock up, drop the little ones off, run off to the school, they're back within 10 minutes and they're gone. The only thing I think we should do is put a few more yellow lines around on drop curbs and across corners. Yeah. So, because that it obviously someone mentioned sight lines and things like that. Thank you. Okay. Thank yeah, you. that's great. Thank you. Um, I mean, I just wanted to make one final point. Oh, okay. Sorry, I wasn't comment, but I, nobody has actually mentioned the small businesses. That's what I was hoping for. Thank you. Um, we live in Baker Street yeah. on the corner of Nasha Street and Baker Street, and just close to us, we have our own little car park that used to be the coal yes. yard. Yeah. And all the houses in Nasha Street have a car park on the back of their garden. And to a certain extent, so does Selwood Road. But the top of the car park is basically for Baker Street and the small businesses there. Mm. And if you start putting permits in there, small family businesses are going to go. Because during the day when everyone else is at work and there is, no, there is not a problem yeah. in Baker Street and, and Nasha Street, but during the day when everybody else is at work, those small businesses, clients and customers come in. And those small businesses can't afford to buy three, four, five permits just so their customers can come in. Um, and then in the evening, we, we, we don't really have a problem. We never used to have a problem, unfortunately. And, and I'm, it's because of the Weymouth yeah. road scheme we now can't come home by, we've got to be home by about six o'clock at night because we yeah. can't park in our own car park. Yeah. But we don't think that, that it's, a, it's a problem if we can sort the whole area out. But my feeling is the small businesses. Do we really want a diverse town like Froome to lose all its small businesses? Thank you. Because I think this yeah. is what this scheme is going to do. Yeah, thank you. And it was something that I kept coming back to is, was the current <laughs> I think initial responses almost seem to suggest that, you know, that the towns, the areas around Trinity or, or Catherine Street, you should only park, park there if you, sorry, move there if you didn't need a car. And there was something so inequitable in that response. I just really kind of felt we needed to kind of move forward with this. Are there any questions online? Yes. Wonderful. This gentleman here. <laughs> <laughs> we'll come to you, the question online, then I'm going to the councillors because we've got like three minutes left. <laughs> okay, can you hear me? Yeah. Oh, we're going there first now. Okay. Hello. Hello, this is Mal Usher here, from town councillor. And I live in West West End, so slightly outside of the Trinity area. Um, just so you know, the uh, deacon is... The deacon is coming to talk to the town council on the 16th of November about uh, these proposals. So anybody who wants to turn up there, then I'm sure you can express your views. Uh, I, for one, have, have, uh, have certainly absorbed everything that's been said tonight. And I think we want to express as a town council, this is, these are the kind of issues that are being raised. I agree with, with a lot of people in the room that there should really be an overall scheme for all of Froome. I don't think there's an easy answer. In fact, I'm not sure there's an answer at all, uh, but we perhaps need to make sure that we don't make any more mistakes because this is a sad tale that we've heard this evening in terms of, I think, the performance of the County Council in, uh, in the way that they've introduced this and the way they've reacted to it. Uh, and we wouldn't want that to continue if there's going to be any further extension to the scheme or even if this scheme is to be retained. So I hope that helps. Uh, no, thank and, uh, you. We'll be expressing ourselves on the 16th of November. Thank, thank you, you, Mel. Um, I'm, I'm kind of glad you mentioned Steve Deacon coming to some meeting because I wasn't quite sure whether to or not in case you'd get overwhelmed with people. So thank you for doing that for me. You, you, your, um, strongest, your strongest point, let me just intervene, would be just to get one or two people to express their views and yeah. to make sure they're well prepared rather than, you don't want to have a lynching. That isn't going to help anybody. Uh, but it'd be great if uh, you know if somebody could actually say this is what I think the views of this area are. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. 
Um, I just wanted to state as well, that as far as we're aware, this town-wide parking review for Froome has been promised since 2008. So I do think that, you know, we need to keep pushing this. Um, I absolutely agree with Mel. There are no easy answers. We know there's so many environmental issues, all the rest of it. But what would be so reassuring is if people who its job was to look at these things and gather data. Um, I would just make the point that we keep saying about the problem uh, is caused by Weymouth Road. It's not. That one of the first instances I was aware was when the Badcocks car park um, was made a charging car park. And that was, so far as I know, since living in, living in Castle Street since 2005, that was when the parking really became exacerbated, particularly for the small business uh, owners who, who use that park to park in. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, that would be my point. Thank you so much. I mean, I would just uh, yeah, like I to emphasize, absolutely. I don't choose or didn't used to choose to park in Weymouth Road. There just was nowhere else mm -hmm. because bit by bit, every single parking area in that area has been taken away. Mm -hmm. When my neighbors moved there 40 odd years ago, they could give me a long list of the parking that was there, available and free. It's not there now. So this is, you know. Anyway, um, councillors. Councillors, anybody like to respond or, or have any views? Just say one or two things, Martin yeah. Dimbury County Council. I, I, um, I had the great misfortune of moving, uh, standing in this ward uh, from the point, this point of view, that it was a bit of a poison chalice when I discovered about this. Um, I would like to say, I've listened tonight, I think we've all listened, um, and there's, there's a disparity of views. I think there was obviously a mistake in the first instance that we... Uh, the County Council did not go through with the parking review. We met with Steve Deakin, some of us online, on Thursday, wasn't it? And um, we have hopefully persuaded him that we must bring forward that review. It's been hanging around. OK, COVID was, was one reason and perhaps an excuse why it didn't happen. Um, and that, that, will, that will be hopefully going ahead. The other thing is in the Unitary Council, where you have issues, that, that differ between the Mendip District Council running the car parks and Somerset running the roads has always been a bit ridiculous, frankly. Um, those that, that they will be run by the same organisation. The disparity of having to pay 300 quid a year to park on a Mendip car park and 60 quid to park in your road is obviously slightly absurd. Um, I don't know if the other councillors want to say anything. Um, the, this, the, what I would say was to echo a point about Weymouth Road. It was introduced with what was thought to be the best interests. That may have been a mistake. The way it was introduced may have been a mistake. I can't see that it would be logical to proceed with Trinity, the Trinity area and having par parking permits in there as things stand. We have to have a parking review. But I would say, um, please do respond to that review because if you object to it strongly, you must make that known. That's all I'm saying. Thanks, Martin. Are there any other councillors present who would like to? Please, <laughs> Polly. <laughs> Hello, I'm Polly Lamb. I'm um, Froome Town Council for Park Ward. So Weymouth Road is in my ward. Um, so I just wanted to say there's great, such a great turnout and everybody coming to express their views is really so helpful for us to be able to absorb um, the general feeling. Um, and that we did meet with Steve Deakin um, and took some of the, you know, existing views back that we already support, mainly that it's a town-wide issue and you can't deal with one road at a time. Um, one of the things is that, that uh, you know, Terry here was talking about urban planning and that, you know, that is being looked at overall um, by uh, Somerset Council and Froome Town Council. So there are overarching plans, not necessarily to do with um, parking directly, um, but you know there are plans that should bring these things together. And it's really important that they are considered after unitary. So that was what we asked Steve Deakin in this meeting was that, you know, look at the town overall and we think that's really important also 
thought that chap from Weymouth Road who started the petition was very brave to come <laughs> and talk about the initial safety because it's all about coming back to that, isn't it? Um, whether or not we can, you know, park outside our houses or whether we live in an area that's difficult to do so. We kind of all agree that uh, Weymouth Road was a little bit chaotic and that something needs to be looked at there. Mm. I, I personally don't think that you can say that somebody speeding up and down is anything other than their issue. So that driver behind that car, the behind that wheel who is speeding up and down in an area, a residential where there is a park is the person at fault there. I, don't, I wouldn't say that a scheme has caused somebody to speed, that's their individual um, problem. So uh, I think that's an, a separate issue that needs to be addressed rather than um, call it, call, saying that any parking problem has caused people to speed. I do think it has increased visibility. I live one end of it and I would say that um, I have seen people being able to flow through at a better speed. I haven't seen people speeding. Um, so um, I've agreed with lots of things in the room tonight and I think it was a really good meeting. Well done. Thank you. Um, I know we've got by proxy Mark Dorrington. Um, I think maybe there was just, if I may, just a few really quick points. Um, I think just to reiterate, concerns around the Weymouth Road scheme are not that safety would, of course, safety was an issue. It was about what is done to deal with that. So there were other options that we have no evidence were considered, probably would have worked better. Why can't we have stats on speeds of cars? Why can't we have stats? precisely how much, how much <clears throat> so you can make informed yeah. decisions and all right. the rest of it, it sorry <laughs> yeah absolutely mark by proxy thank you so i'm mark by proxy um <laughs> councillor mark dorrington who is uh, one of the town council councillors for the trinity area is that any better yes. wonderful Right. Okay, uh, yes, yeah, so just to, to clarify, on behalf of Mark Dorrington, Town Councillor for the Trinity area, uh, he apologises for not being able to be at the meeting, um, but he would have made the following suggestions to Trinity residents with a vote on the proposals. Trinity is a very different demographic to Weymouth Road. Residents there generally have garages and driveways, but very few Trinity properties have them. Some parts of Trinity are not aware of the proposals and parking will be displaced into these areas, including an area in the top 20% of deprivation in England. Any added cost to our residents, 60 pounds for the first car, should be deplored at this time of financial turmoil. Surely it must be better to allow the Weymouth Road scheme to bed in, especially when school streets are added to the mix. In May, 2023 Somerset County Council will control all our parking and will be able to carry out the much promised review across the town. It would also then be able to consider any effects that developments in Saxonville and elsewhere will have on our traffic. I'm sure attendees will raise other points but the ones above are in my opinion suffi sufficient to advise against voting for the Trinity scheme. In the meantime residents can express their opinion by responding to the letter if they received one or uh, or via the email addresses that were shown on the screen earlier. Put those back on. Thank you very much. Um, um, sorry, just his last bit. If residents wish to contribute to the review of the restrictions in Weymouth Road, they can also do via the parking consultation email that was on the screen earlier as well. Oh, we, okay. <laughs> it's news to me, but yeah, we can put that back up. We don't know. Just one point about the review. We've got to talk about the review. And I presume the councillors are all talking about a town wide review. But I think we were also promised when the scheme was introduced to Weymouth Road, not Somerset Road, that there was going to be a review of that scheme. Yeah, and I'm to start it. But yeah we're three months. No one will make it to Somerset Road that doesn't know anything about it. I'll take it back. If I may, I mean, I asked about it the other day. Yeah, and it's it, and I, in fact, I had it brought forward to three months rather than six months. So um, that should be in operation now. So I want to see it happen. Uh, sorry, Martin. Just to say, it started on the September the nineteenth, um, memorable date for many. Ends on December the nineteenth. In theory, have I Steve's latest letter to us now says it's six months. So we really don't know. 
And as you say, nobody else, but also the other point about it is we don't know what, how this review is being actioned and how we feed into it. Um, I just wanted to make a final point. I still feel quite strongly that the Weymouth Road residence scheme is not the solution for the Weymouth Road issues. I absolutely acknowledge they are there. You know, my kids spent many years walking up that road, going to the park. Of course, they're there, the issues. But I do think there's other ways to address it. And we cannot ignore the fact that there are huge swathes and hidden pockets, Catherine Street and around that area, that simply have no parking, none. And they used to have it. And do we want to make an area where you can only afford to live if you are lucky enough not to have to use a car for work, et cetera, et cetera. My final point is 10 past eight. Gordon would like to make a point. <laughs> Sorry, Gordon, just before you do, because some people may need to leave early, boxes at the edge to put in any points, comments you want raised with councillors on the table on the way out. Also the collection boxes. I'm thinking really it'd be great to raise money for fair through. Up to you guys entirely. Just one quick point. Um, my basic objection to the existing Weymouth Road scheme is that it's basically inequitable and unprogressive. It's giving cheap or free extra parking to those who mostly already have. I'd address Mr. O'Shea uh, without picking on him, Mr. O'Shea, if the council could come up with other traffic calming measures for Weymouth Road, would you then be happy for the council to reintroduce parking for us all? The, the, per, the permit parking scheme that was introduced was not my preferred option. Mm, so okay. let, me, let me ask you simply, if there were uh, other traffic calming, it Sorry. was preferable to doing nothing. Fair enough. But if there were adequate traffic calming measures reintroduced as part of a bigger review, would you then be happy to allow uh, the rest of us to, to come back and park in your road? Well, not all of us. <laughs> alternative proposals properly consulted on. Uh, yeah. no Thank you so much for that. I really appreciate that. Thank you, Gordon. Brilliant point. Um, I feel probably the town council would like us to go. <laughs> um, Basically, I, I will call an end to the meeting. Thank you all so much for attending. We've got the, the um, email addresses back up. I have put an email address as you go out, which was our Catherine Street parking email address. I am the person manning that. I cannot promise you I will return your emails in any timely fashion, but I will read them at some point and respond if you did want more information, etc. We may pull this together in a more um, organised way at some point. At the moment, it's Marina. Marina. Marina, sorry, I've been asked, do you have the email address for the consultation? Parking no. consultation. What is it? Is it Steve, Steve's email address? I think we're talking just about Steve Deacon's per, um, work email address. Oh, okay. James and Mark Dorrington. Okay. What I would say is Steve doesn't tend to respond, possibly because he's getting 10,000 emails. But I do think it's important that you continue sending those emails. <laughs> Um, to you. The Catherine Street parking email address. Okay. Please do send stuff to that. But I, honestly, hands up. I probably won't respond for two or three weeks. Yeah. I mean, what I was going to say is I'm so baffled by your, you know, you have this petition. Yeah. And their response is to extend the scheme when you're actually saying we don't want to. Yeah, it's yeah.